The Google Display Network is a great place to go out and either prospect and find new potential customers to purchase your product or services or to retarget users who have already been to your website and engaged with you. There are tons of different types of targeting options throughout the GDN, but one of the ones I want to talk about today are smart campaigns. They were launched a few years ago, they've been running for a while, and I think that some people have used them a little bit, but today I want to talk about the basics of how to set them up, what they do, and some best practices for success. So let's hop in. In the Google Ads interface, we want to create a new campaign to create a smart display campaign. You'll then be prompted to select a goal or objective for your campaign. For smart display campaigns to work, you have to choose either sales, leads, or website traffic. So one of these first three here. Just for sake of example, I'm going to use website traffic. It'll then ask you to choose a campaign type. So for a smart display campaign, you guessed it, we got to choose display. It'll then open up a third window where you have to choose your campaign subtype. You have three options to choose from, standard display, smart display, or a Gmail campaign. For this example, clearly, we're going to choose a smart display campaign. One thing to note is that if you do not have conversion tracking set up in your account, this second option for smart display campaign literally will not even show up. You'll only see standard display and Gmail campaign. So make sure that you have conversion tracking set up and squared away with your account. Otherwise, you literally will not be able to make a smart display campaign. We'll talk in a little bit about best practices for success with conversion tracking set up. But for right now, just make sure that everything is set up and squared away so you can actually create your display campaign type. Now at the bottom, it'll ask you to enter your website. I will type in example just for sake of example. Click continue. It'll then ask you to include a campaign name. I'm just gonna leave it as this. You get to choose your location. You can choose what type of geotargeting you want on your campaign, so that's all pretty standard. You then get to choose the language. We'll just leave it as English. The next thing I wanna talk about are the bidding sections. It'll first ask you what you want to focus on. It'll always default to conversion. Sometimes there'll be other metrics here, but for right now, it's gonna focus on just conversions. You can see that in other instances, you might have app or store visits. That could also be your goal here as well. So we'll leave that as conversions. It'll then tell you that it's automatically going to maximize for conversions and you can set a target cost per action. So a target CPA that you want within your account. Here it says a typical target CPA for a display campaign is $5.39. Just ignore this. You likely already know what your target CPA needs to be for your account where you're profitable, where you're not profitable, so on and so forth. So choose the target CPA that makes sense. For this example, I'm just gonna use $10. Next, it'll ask you what you wanna pay for. At some point, you will have the conversions that are an available option here, which can be a good thing to test, but just for sake of setting things up here, I'm gonna choose clicks. The next piece we need to set is the budget. We'll talk about the balance between our target CPA goals and our budget goals in a little bit, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as $100 a day for the budget. Then we scroll down, and we can create our ad groups. Just leave the default name in there. You'll notice that targeting is grayed out. You cannot do anything with this because that's what smart display campaigns do. They choose who you're going to target and they put ads in front of those people based on the conversion performance within your account, how people are behaving across the web and any other indicators they can reach and start to think that they're finding the right users for you. The last piece we need to do is set up our ads. For smart display campaigns, you'll basically just need to set up new responsive display ads for your campaigns. These will be the same responsive display ads that you will use in all of the different display campaigns that you have. We actually have another video around best practices for image and logos that you can check out in the show notes. But aside from that, add up to your five headlines, your long headlines, your descriptions, your business name, as you normally would for your regular responsive display ads. When you're finished, just click create campaign. And now it'll kick you back into the ad groups page because everything is set up just the way that we had it in place. Smart display campaigns don't allow you to do most of the same optimizations that you would do in a regular display campaign, but there are a couple that we can knock out to make sure that they're going to be as useful as possible while still having most of the types of targeting and obviously the ad content automated by Google. So first let's hop into the settings tab. All this is set up with what we just currently looked at, everything that we set up for our campaigns. But if you click on additional settings, it'll open up these additional pieces here. And the ones that I wanna focus on are these two down here, conversions and content exclusions. So this section is just like it would be for any other campaign in your account. We can now use different conversion actions per campaign. We also have a video for this already, so check that out if you wanna see how to set up campaign level conversion actions for your Google campaigns. The next piece I wanna talk about are content exclusions. This is really the only way that we can impact where our smart display ads will show up around the Google Display Network. This is just the same 
same as you would see for most of the other Google Display campaigns where you can exclude content around tragedy and conflict, you can stay out of embedded videos, all of these different categories that were here. In the past, we used to be able to upload a negative placements list to smart display campaigns. We can no longer do that. This is the only control piece we have for where our ads show around the web. So if anything is going to be sensitive for your brand and you wanna stay away from it, make sure you check out the options here and click the ones that you wanna stay out of. Now that we have our smart display campaign set up, I wanna go through a couple of ways that we can impact the campaign to make sure that we're getting the most out of it and it performs as well as it possibly can. The first thing to think about is when to actually use a smart display campaign. So in a second, we're gonna go through what Google considers the right reasons for using a smart display campaign. But the first one I wanna talk about is my own personal preference and my own experience. If you have already been doing prospecting on the Google Display Network and you're seeing some success, but you're kind of running out of options that you want to test and you're just not quite finding new combinations of targeting who want to reach out into, test a smart display campaign. It can be an easy way to extend the reach of what you already have, but I don't see a smart display campaign as your sole display targeting option type. It's very similar to a dynamic search ads campaign for search. Once you already have your core foundational keyword campaign set up, those are humming along, those are doing well, but you wanna start finding some new combinations, then you set up a DSA campaign to go after some incremental traffic on top of what you're already getting in your core campaigns. Same thing with display and smart display campaigns. I would only set them up if you're already seeing good success on the display network and you're just looking for an easy way to extend further into the network. So now let's hop into why Google thinks that you should use smart display campaigns. The first bullet they've got here is attract additional customers beyond your manually targeted campaigns. That's basically the shortened version of saying what I just said, but hopefully the additional context I had in the comparison to the search network and keyword campaigns versus DSA campaigns kind of illuminates the reasons as to why you would do that a little bit better. The second is around conversion tracking. We already talked about needing to have conversion tracking set up in the account. Otherwise you literally can't even create the campaign. Pain. The last two that Google uses here are a little bit wishy-washy to me. One says, if you've limited your display network advertising to remarketing, but now want to reach people earlier in the buying process. Great. Yes, you want to start prospecting people. But again, I wouldn't utilize this unless you've already tested out manually targeted campaigns and you have some sense of what works. The last one is an option I would completely ignore. You're new to advertising on the display network and want a fast and highly performing campaign. Do not let this be your first test into the Google display network. It might work relatively well, but honestly, I think that if you are willing to take the time and put in the effort to create some manually targeted campaigns, you're going to see more success and you're going to have a better understanding of what works and what doesn't. On the last slide, the bullet point about conversion tracking had some additional information and I really want to hit hard on this because of the importance of conversion tracking and conversion performance to see success with smart display campaigns. If you are going to test smart display, make sure that you have a minimum number of conversions on your pixel in the past 30 days. It doesn't have to be for a specific campaign or your smart display campaign because obviously we just created that. Since Google is picking the targeting for you and going after certain target audiences, it's operating pretty similar to what a Facebook lookalike audience would be. It's basically saying, how are these people behaving on the network? Are they behaving similarly to the people who've already converted that we've tracked on this pixel? Maybe I should go target that person with this display campaign. So it's really important to make sure that you already have some conversion history on the pixel because that's what Google is gonna start to cue off of. It's gonna take some insights from those users who did convert to try and find a way to go find more users who behave relatively similarly because it thinks they're going to convert. That's what this campaign type is trying to do. They are trying to get you the conversion actions that you want. So make sure you have enough data for it to actually optimize off of. The next thing I wanna talk about are CPA and budget best practices. When we just set up our campaign a little while ago, I gave it a $10 target CPA and a $100 daily budget. That wasn't an accident, that was for a reason. Since Google is going out and trying to test different users who may or may not convert, and it's trying to adjust its targeting to find potential converters, we need to give it some room to understand what's going on, to test out different things, test different audiences, and start to find patterns in who it can target. And over time, it will get more efficient. So there's two things to keep in mind here. The first is to set a reasonable target CPA. Do not come in, and if you have a $100 CPA for all of your other campaigns, 
do not set the smart display campaigns to a $50 CPA. You just won't get them. You'll end up spending money and it likely won't convert. It's not a reasonable CPA from what you've seen. If anything, I would suggest setting your target CPA to be 10, maybe 20% higher than what you're seeing on average in your account and give the algorithm a little bit of leniency whenever you're just starting out with a fresh new campaign so it can get a little bit of testing under its belt, start to learn some patterns, and then you can slowly march down your target CPA over time. The second piece is the daily budget. Don't lock down your daily budget to be only one or two times your target CPA. If your target CPA is $10 and you set a daily budget to $20, that does not give Google a reasonable amount of learning space to understand who will and won't convert for that target CPA. You need to set your daily budget to 10 to 15 times your CPA target that you have for your campaign. For some of you, that just made this a completely unreasonable campaign. If you have a $100 target CPA and that's what you've been hitting on your search campaigns and some of your other display campaigns, but you don't have $1,000 to $1,500 that you could spend on this campaign type each day for one or two weeks or upwards of a month to test out and see if this works, this campaign type is likely not for you or you need to pick a different conversion action that has a lower target CPA goal. Maybe don't go after that $100 further down the funnel purchase conversion action. Maybe go for something that could be anywhere from 50 to 25 or $10, something further up the funnel, an engagement target, a content download, a video view, something along those lines so you can make sure that you have enough budget, but also have the budget to CPA ratio in check to launch your smart display campaigns and actually test and see if they're going to work well. One of the few things we can do in our smart display campaigns to make sure we're optimizing for performance is to check in on our ad component performance. We've already been using the responsive display ads for our smart display campaign. And now we can start to see performance based on what the asset type is and then what the performance layers of it are. We're not gonna be able to see the clicks, impressions, cost, conversion performance like we might want to for our responsive display ads. But in smart campaigns, Google does give us the ability to see a performance metric within the campaigns. Come back in on a regular basis and see which components of your ads are performing well within each asset type. So at the top, we have two descriptions here. One is performing best and one is performing low. Kick out the low performing one, write a new one, add it in there and then let them run for a little bit and see how the performance compares between them. You can see that our three headlines in the middle, they all say good. None of them are outperforming the other ones necessarily. So for the time being, we'll leave those and we'll see how they're doing in a next week or two or a month, something along those lines. Here, the images will always take longer to have some performance comparison between the different variables that we have in place. All of these still say learning. At some point, they will say best, good, low, those sorts of things. So come back in on a regular basis, check what's performing low, kick out the low performers, anything below good, write a new variant, get a new image, insert that into your ad rotation so you can start to test and see what's performing best and make sure you're constantly iterating on these ad components since this is one of the very few ways that we can actually impact performance on our smart display campaigns. And that's it, it's pretty simple. There aren't lots of levers that we can pull for smart display campaigns, but again, it should only be an incremental part of your display strategy. It shouldn't be the bread and butter, the entirety of your display campaign strategy. So make sure that you've got it kind of set up and are treating it as such. Let's always make sure that we have conversion tracking set up properly and we have the right amount of volume either on the display network or the search network on that pixel before you launch this campaign so it has the best chance of success with targeting different users around the web and making sure that it can get you conversions at the target CPA that you want. And remember that target CPA needs to be reasonable and then your daily budget needs to be 10 to 15 times that target CPA that you have to make sure that there's a learning phase and Google can find the right folks to target that have a higher likelihood of converting. Last, make sure that you're impacting what you actually can in the campaigns. Make sure that you're constantly reviewing your ad performance, the ad components, how they're doing against each other. Kick out low performers, write new, put something else in place, and always be sure to set up the uh, settings on the campaigns to make sure that you're excluding your ads from showing up on content that you don't wanna be on that's not brand safe, and that you're optimizing toward the right conversion with the campaign level conversion actions. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 